So basically what, what I'm going to show here today is, is how to build a bicycle frame model. And I'm going to start with some very basic elements. Um, typically, full disclosure here, I'm not a bicycle designer, although I am, a, I am a, an avid cyclist. So I do have a little bit of knowledge of, of bicycles and bicycle frames, but I don't want to try and pass myself off as a, as a, a bicycle frame designer here. But I wanted the, the nice thing about a bicycle frame is, especially some of the newer carbon fiber designs, is there's a lot of really subtle uh, and, and rather beautiful organic transitions that happen within um, especially some of the, like I said, some of the more modern carbon fiber frames. And so to the, they also have some hard points that you need to hit. So basically what I've done is I have uh, a sketch that I just threw together here of basically what I'm trying to accomplish. And to, to look at the basics, let me hide this curves here for a second. Um, to look at the basics of what, what we're going to do here is I want, obviously, a head tube that's, that's going to be round uh, in, this, in this axis. Um, I have a top tube that's going to have uh, uh, a, a kind of a, a tubular shape, but it's going to have this stepped detail in it that's going to cause an undercutting uh, highlight line that's going to transition from here through the seat tube junction and then back into uh, the rear uh, triangle. And, you know, typically when this kind of stuff is modeled, there's a couple of real problem areas. One is this transition right here for obvious reasons because you've got a lot of stuff all blending together. And then the bottom bracket uh, transition down here is also really crazy because you've got a Y branch in this direction. And then if we were to rotate around in perspective, you have a Y branch back here in, in the triangle. So you've got two Y branches blending into an area that has to then blend into an area that's got a circular element in it. So typically, you know, I've got some friends in the bicycle industry and I've seen some models that, that have been created and um, the, the, this area down here tends to be a real nightmare if you try and model this implicitly in NERVS. So, I figured this would be a really great way to demonstrate kind of the power of T-splines and, and how simple and easy it is to get transitions that would just be an absolute nightmare to try and model in NURBS. And, and if you don't believe me, try and model one of these up in NURBS and send it to us and, and, uh, and I, think you'll, I think you'll be impressed if you try and model it in NURBS versus try and modeling it in T-splines. So, so let's go back and, and look at how this is laid out. Um, for the purpose of this webinar, I'm going to call the head tube and the, and the bottom bracket area um, hard points. And I've got those represented just with some simple, um, you know, rhino and nerves polysurfaces. And then um, I've, I've basically laid out some curves that, you know, clean up this awful sketch I did, but um, basically are, are a little bit more mathematically precise versions of kind of what I was looking for with my sketch. So I've laid out kind of the top profile, the bottom profile, and then basically about where this, uh, this light knife is going gonna, is gonna to transition through. And then if we take a look in here, I, I do want to have a little step in the head tube so that this detail wraps around. <clears throat> Obviously, the most difficult parts of this model are going to be the transitions and where these things blend into each other. But the beauty of T-splines is that this kind of stuff actually almost happens automatically, whereas in a NURBS model, you know, the, the main body surfaces are really super easy, but the transitions tend to be where the, where the hassles are. In T-splines, the main body surfaces are easy, and the transitions you get almost for free. So it's, it's really kind of a beautiful thing. Um, the other thing that's going to happen here is we've got a Y branch that's going to happen right in here and a Y branch that's going to happen right in here. And those are going to happen across the lines of symmetry. So there's going to be an interesting little um, uh, transition that's happening there. But again, it's, it's really super easy to do this in T-splines. So, so that's enough of my, uh, of my soapboxing. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, anybody who's seen any of the tutorials that I've done in the past, um, you know, to be honest, my bag of tricks here is really, really shallow. Um, 
I, I start almost all of my models the same way. And if you've watched the iron or if you've watched any, you know, the helicopter or any of the tutorials that I've done, I use what I call the append face workflow. And for this particular demo, since there's some, some curves that I want to hit, I'm going to start with a similar type of workflow, but I'm going to use curves to generate my original faces. And then I'm going to use the weld tool to weld them all together. I'm going to make one big flat, essentially, paper cutout. I'm going to extrude it to give it a little bit of thickness. We're going to split across the line of symmetry to create the form. And then we're going to go in and just do some adjusting and some pulling and pulling of, pull, pushing and pulling of some verts. So the skills that you need to have to create this model are basically really, really limited. If you can um, alt extrude an object, and if you can use the weld tool, um, and you can use the, the translate manipulators, you can build this model. There's really nothing else. You know, there'll be a handful of other things. We'll insert some points and insert some edges and do some bridging and some stuff like that. But it's like the, the basic overall layout and the basic of how this model is going to be built is really, really, really simple. So don't, don't get hung up on that, on, on the complexity of the shape. So let's go ahead and just get started. And, and first of all, I'll point out a few things about the manipulator. One, if you click on the labels in the manipulator, you will cycle through what each part of the heads-up display does. For instance, up in the manipulator, if I click on the translate button, it switches to rotate. If I click on rotate, it switches to scale. If I click on scale, it, it goes away to hidden. You can also access this using the keyboard. If I hit the A key, or I'm sorry, if I hit the Q key, it's hidden. If I hit the W key, I get translate. If I hit the E key, I get rotate. If I hit the R key, I get scale. And the one thing that I always try and point out is if you go one step farther on the keyboard and hit the T key, your manipulator and your heads up display will disappear, but that'll allow you to reposition your manipulator using either the Rhino O snaps or just dropping something within the screen. So if I wanted to move my manipulator from where it was uh, in the centroid of the object that was picked to something over here, I'd hit the T key and I move the, the manipulator over here. I can also move the manipulator through the, the toolbar by hitting the set pivot point. And I just click over here and it will move have to have it on though. Okay, so if I pick an object, my manipulator obviously it immediately snaps to the center point of the object. If I want to move the manipulator, I can go to the set pivot and move it over there. Helps if I have it turned on. Set pivot. Or I can do the same thing by hitting the T key and moving it over there. This is especially helpful if you're rotating objects or if you're scaling objects. If I wanted to scale something from this end as opposed to the center, if I pick this object and I had my scale manipulator up, right now it's scaling from the center. If I hit my T key or if I go down here to set pivot, I can change this down to here and I can scale from this end as opposed to the center of the object. Okay. The multiplier just controls the speed of what happens here. If I pick a vert and I move it and it's set to 1, it's going to move at a certain speed. If I change that to 2, it's going to move faster. If I change it to 0.1, it's going to move slower. So it allows you to adjust how fast everything happens. The, the drag mode, um, I, can, I can drag by the C plane. I can drag by the view mode. I can drag by the normals of the object, or I can drag by the world. And then soft manipulation, we're not going to cover too much of that right now, but that's basically just enabled or disabled. And you can change the radius of how that happens here. And something that always trips me up is if I turn this on and hotkeys are disabled, um, I'm, I'm fairly crippled because I use hotkeys all the time. Although Matt made me promise not to use hotkeys for the demos anymore. So I'll try and do that. So for this case, I'm going to turn them on, but I'm going to promise not to use them as much as possible. <laughs> Um, so let's go ahead and get started. And basically what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do this, is I'm going to extrude a line of faces from here to here. I'm going to extrude a line of faces down a little bit 
to make my transition, and then I'm going to extrude a line of faces up, and I'm going to knit those all together using the weld tool. For the purposes of this, I want my point counts of all my curves to match. And so knowing that, I'm going to use the Rhino Rebuild tool first, and I'm going to make sure that my point count for the, for the purpose of this demo is set to 8, and the degree is 3. For you know, your own purposes, you may want to adjust this higher or lower depending on what you want to happen. Obviously, less, less points is going to create less spaces going in this direction. More points is going to create more. So for this case, 8 seems to be about right. I'm going to rebuild those and let them all match. That way, when I extrude each curve, I'm going to have the same number of faces coming off each one. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to pick this one first. I'm going to bring up my manipulate my heads up display, which I which I brought up by hitting the control and space bar, um, and I'm going to go to my translate manipulator. I'm going to click on the Z direction, and I'm going to alt drag the Z direction down a little bit, and I'm going to create a row of faces. And the way that I know when to stop is right about in the middle when that touches, I'm going to stop even though the ends are not quite right. We're going to go ahead and we're going to fix that later. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude down just a little bit because that's just going to be a small transition. And then at the bottom, I'm going to extrude up. And the reason that I did this is I have now controlled my profile of the top of this light line, which is important to keep, the top of the bar, which was important to keep, and the bottom of the bar, which was important to keep. So Kyle, All the could, rest of this could, stuff, you, uh, could you go ahead and switch to shaded mode just briefly? Absolutely. So again, the, just to reinforce the difference when, so Kyle is actually making surfaces by moving the manipulator and those curves, and, and the difference is just holding down the, every time you hold down the Alt key and drag the manipulator, you're making a T-spline surface. And so that's just yep. a really simple way to, to get a surface from curves. Yeah. So, in fact, I'd be, happy to, I'd be happy to repeat that process just so you can see it with, uh, with in shaded mode. So basically what I'm going to do is pick this, and I'm going to Alt-drag, and I'm going to make faces. Remember the Alt key is my really horrible joke in my training classes where we say alt is German for add. It's not, but it's one ridiculous way of remembering it. And I'm going to drag down there. So I've controlled the three aspects of my model that I want to keep, which is the outside profile of the top and the bottom and the, and the top profile of my, of my surfaces. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from smooth mode to box mode because I want to do all my stitching in box mode. It's just a little easier to keep a handle on. So I'm going to switch. I'm going to come down here, and I am going to hit my smooth toggle button. And you'll notice that it goes from nice smooth curves to a little bit of a segmented thing that they've got going on here. And for now, I'm going to hide my, whoops, I'm going to hide my curves. I'm going to put that on a different layer. Hang on just a second. I'm going to click over here to objects. I'm going to pick the surfaces that I made, and I'm going to move those to a different layer so that I can shut these off for now. Kyle, right. can you can you just mention one more time why you uh, why you like to go to box mode for this? I like to go to box mode because it's it simplifies everything a little bit and 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 it's a little easier to diagnose if there's a problem and um, and you know it sometimes when you're in in smooth mode you can cause a problem or making a surface that that's overlapping or or bow tied or something like that that will cause a problem in the model which down the road will make you nuts because you won't be able to figure out where a weird crease is coming from or something like that. In box mode, if you look at it, it's, it's, a, it's a very simple representation of what your model looks like. 
Yeah, and could you just could you just toggle back and forth a couple times between the box mode and the smooth mode for those, just to kind of show what the what the relationship is. And and it'll become clearer kind of as we go forward, and I'll I'll certainly point that out as we go forward. But for here, if you notice, these are made up of straight line segments. If I switch to smooth mode, you'll notice that these all smooth out. So what's happening is the smooth mode is a is a result of the box mode being interpolated smoothly. It's yeah, the simplest simplest way I can explain. Yeah, it. so the smooth mode is what the actual T spine surface is mathematically smooth, and that's what the smooth mode is showing. The box mode, it's just um, basically the control polygon of the object, and so right. it, you can interact with the model a little bit faster, and um, and just. And when you're laying out the basics of the model, it, it does create a little bit more simple representation. So, great. So let's go into the and let's let's knit this together into you know kind of what we want to have happening here. And I already decided that I wanted this surf this this edge to remain pretty much where it was. I want this edge to remain pretty much where it was, and I want this bottom edge to remain pretty much where it was. So that. I'm going to move this edge. I'm going to move, and I'm going to move this edge because I want everything else to stay put. So there's there's faster ways of doing this. You can merge edges and stuff like that. But for the purpose of this, in in its ultimate simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and just weld these points individually. And there's a cool trick with the weld tool based on how you pick the object. If I pick a point here, and I hit the weld key or the weld tool, and then pick a point down here, my first point jumps to my second point. Let me undo that for a second. If I pick both of them and then hit the weld, they jump together, so they're going to average their distance. And obviously, if I pick this one, hit weld, and pick this one, the bottom one's going to jump to the top. Well, I've already decided that I know that this edge right here needs to stay put, so I'm going to jump this point to this one. So I'm going to pre-pick, hit the weld, and pick here. Same thing here, I'm going to pick, hit the weld key, and snap that. I'm going to pick this one, hit the weld, go to there, this one, weld to here, this one, weld there. That way I know everything that I want to stay put is staying put. And there. So now I've welded this surface to this surface and I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to move this one to here and the shortcut for this is if I pick this and hit the Z key that'll jump up. Pick here either hit the weld button or the Z key, that'll jump up there. Pick this one, either hit the weld button or the Z key, that'll jump there. Pick weld button or Z key. Pick weld button there. So now if I shade this, these are all one one surface and it's flat right now which is what I wanted. If I smooth toggle this it'll change back to smooth mode and you'll notice that my top curve is right, my bottom curve is right, and the top of my knife line, my light knife is right. So that's the way to kind of control the shapes. So let's go through and do that with the rest of the the rest of the, the objects here. And what I'm going to do is make kind of the basic shapes and then I'm going to extrude some edges and do some welding to kind of knit the whole thing together. So I'm going to extrude this curve and if I extrude just in the Z, I'm going to go straight down from that, which is not necessarily what I want. I want to go kind of, you know, perpendicular to that curve. So I'm going to pick this curve and I'm going to alt drag using this C plane icon right here which allows me to, in a constrained manner, drag this down to about the middle of the frame. And it doesn't need to be super precise for this. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to drag this up 
to about there. And I'm going to do the exact same process I did before. I'm going to go here to vert mode. Unshade that. And in this case, I want these to snap to the, together because I want that to kind of average. So I'm going to pick, pick both and hit the Z key. I'm going to pre-pick both again, hit the Z key or the weld button. See, that's how I can cheat and use hotkeys without making Matt mad at me. Weld button or the Z key. So now I've just knitted those together, and I know that my top curve is right, my bottom curve is right, but I've also got a, a row of edges right down the center, which is going to allow me to pull that towards me and create the shape for the bicycle frame. Hey, Kyle. Um, yeah. So if you're going to use those hotkeys, could you just go ahead and pull up the, uh, the options so that everyone can kind of see where, where they can find the list of all the hotkeys? Yes. So this is in the, in the Rhino options. If you go tool options, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll see a T-splines um, menu here. If you open that, it'll show the hotkeys right in here. Now, you can also change these to, to whatever you want. So. And so let's go to make the back. We're going to do these the, the exact same way. I'm going to alt extrude using the C plane disk there. I'm going to alt extrude up using the C plane disk back here. And I'm going to go to vertex mode. And again, I'm going to pick both, hit the Z key or the weld button. Pick both, hit the Z key or the weld button. Pick both. Z key or weld button, and just knit these up. This is this is the fundamental of T splines here. If you if you can alt extrude and weld, you can build a lot of stuff. Same thing down here. I'm going to just drag this out a little bit. I'm going to alt drag this out a little bit. I did alt drag the top one, by the way. I'm going to go to vert mode, pre-pick and Z key, pre-pick and Z. Oops, not that one. Now, the, the cool thing about this is if you can if you can picture this in 3D, this center row, this center edge right here. If you imagine that. If these are your top and your bottom, you know, center points of a tube, this edge is what you're going to pull forward in order to, when we get this, when we change this from being a flat shape to, uh, to, to having some form, this is what you're going to pull forward in order to create that, that circular shape. So I've got the basics of my, of my model here, and let me just... Make sure I've got everything on the right layer here. I'm going to put these all on the same layer with this. Just change the objects there. And at this point, I can kind of, I can just hide my layout bits because I don't need them for right this minute. And then I can go ahead and start putting this together. Well, you'll notice that I don't have my seat tube or my, or my seat mast in here. And what I really need to do is um, is to start kind of putting that stuff together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge between this edge and this edge, and that's going to create a, a set of faces in here. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. Make sure I'm going to hit the bridge tool down here, and I'm going to make sure that my selection mode is on edges, which I'm going to get by clicking there. And I'm going to pick this edge and this edge, and I'm just going to right click to accept that. I want my segments to be one, which means I'll only build one face in here. And then I've just bridged between those two so that these are now, if I go to object mode up here, 
these are all connected. Well, the cool thing about what just happened there is I just got a nice edge right here that is strangely coincident with my C tube. So if I go to edge mode, instead of extruding a curve, I can also just extrude an edge by alt dragging on the Z. And you'll notice that I just add a face. And I want to kind of give myself a decent opportunity for having a transition in there. So I'm going to bring it up to about here. And then if you can imagine that, you know, blending between those is going to, is going to kind of create that transition. So let me just tune this up a little bit by going to the rotate tool. If I click through in my manipulator here, I can get to the rotate. And I'm going to just turn that so that it's a little bit more in the direction that I want to go. And I'm going to go to Burt's mode here, pick this, and I'm going to translate that over just a little bit so that it's kind of lining up. And then maybe I'll just move this one a little bit using my C-plane disk so that it kind of fits about where my transition is going to go. And I don't have to worry about this yet because I can do a lot of tuning up as I, you know, once we get into uh, getting this all put together. So let's continue with what we're doing here. And I'm just going to very quickly alt-drag this edge to add another face here. Alt drag another face. And I just want to make sure I have enough information for all my transitions that are going to happen. And so that I have kind of a nice face that fits right in here, I'm going to alt drag one more about there. And you'll notice that I'm not being terribly careful about where they fit. I'm going to just tune up my edges a little bit. I'm going to pull this over. Obviously, I could do this with curves like I did before, but I just wanted to show an alternate method for doing this. I'm going to just pick this edge and translate it over a little bit. Okay, So all we're doing is alt-dragging and welding. We haven't done anything else yet. So here's a situation. I've got a bunch of stuff coming together. How do I determine where what gets connected to what? Well, if I bridge between here, I'm going to have this is going to be connected to here, this is going to be connected to here, and then so that'll flow nicely, but I'm also going to have a segment at the bottom here that's just begging to be connected to this. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to bridge from here to here. Again, using my selection mode as edges, I right click to accept one segment because I only want one segment coming through there. So now I've just connected this to the top of that. And then I've got an edge here and here. If I go to vert mode, just like we were doing before. Now I want to keep this. I don't want this to get crazy on me. I want to keep this kind of where it was. So I'm going to jump this one to here by hitting the weld key. And then I'm going to jump this one, weld, to there. And you can see how you can start to picture how this stuff is going to start blending together. So I'm going to translate. I'm just going to adjust a little bit of this. That's going to get a little thicker in there. And then this is going to move around. Again, you don't have to get crazy with this. but you can start to see how this layout starts to make sense. If you imagine this blending smoothly right through there, kind of like the points on a nerves curve. You know how you make a nerves curve where there's a point here, a point here, and then you have one, two, three points to make a corner, and you get a nice blend through there? That's kind of the way to think about box mode. So I've got this, this edge hanging out in space, and I need to make my seat mast. Well, let's go to edge mode. I'm going to pick here, and I'm going to just alt-drag again. I'm going to bring this up. So now I've got these two hanging out in space. So I'm going to go to vert mode, and I'm going to, I'm going to select both of those because I just want them to average, weld those together. And now I can start translating this thing up a little bit, and you'll see how I kind of 
you know, I'm getting my transition coming up here, so you figure I probably need another face in there. I want to try and, you know, have everybody understand kind of why I'm laying the patches out, because the sometimes it's it seems really arbitrary, and to be honest, sometimes it is. I have to go back and, you know, look at it a little bit and see if what I've done makes sense. But basically what you want to do is is lay your patches out in a way that kind of makes sense with your form. So it makes sense to have this, you know, this patch layout returning on itself because there's a little return in the shape here. It makes sense to have this not be, you know, I wouldn't want this to be over here because that doesn't make sense with my form. I'd want this to kind of flow with my form. And I want this transition to, to start turning the corner here and be able to go straight up for the seat mask. So I'm going to go in edge mode here. And I'm just going to alt extrude or alt drag on the on the translate manipulator, add another face there, alt drag up, add another face there. Now this is when I, I start looking at it and say, okay. What makes sense? I can see this edge, that makes sense. I can see this edge, that makes sense. I can see where my form's going to come from there. Um, my seat mast, on the other hand, right now, I, I probably am going to want a tubular shape on that in one way or another. And right now, I've kind of just got a flat plane. So I probably am going to want to add a little bit more detail in there. So if I hit my insert point tool and I just snap to the middle of these faces and right click to accept. I just split those in half. So now I have an opportunity here to pull this forward and then push the edges back and you could, you could kind of picture in your mind how that will make a tubular shape. <clears throat> and I probably am going to want to do the same thing down the seat mast. I'm just going to split this and maybe I'll go one more there. Cool thing about T-splines as opposed to sub-V modeling is you can T stuff off like this into a center of a face and it doesn't make any difference. Now, <clears throat> actually let me reconsider that a little bit. If you notice there's a big flat going on here and they're really I need to have a little bit more detail there. So I'm going to just continue what I was doing before and I'm going to insert points through here and I'm going to double check to make sure invert mode that I connected these by selecting them and seeing that there's only one T-splines vertice here. If there was, if there was this, and let me just turn off my snaps for a second. I'm going to purposely make a mistake here. If I did this, then, and I went into vert mode, if I select these two, I see that there's two verts there. Well, I don't want two verts. I want this to be continual. So I'm going to pick this one and weld it by hitting the Z key or the weld button over there. Now if I pick it, I can look in here and visually confirm that there's only one vert there. I know that's what I want. I've added a little bit more detail here, and this allows me to more closely match what I was looking for. Okay, so that's all starting to make sense to everybody, I'm hoping. So let's go back and address the head tube area. And all I'm going to do is move this vert to get my little kink there. I'm going to just adjust the shape of this one a little bit. And so I need to make a head tube in here. And right now, this one's overlapping a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a point here to get an extra row of edges. Because now what that allows me to do, I have an edge here that makes sense to start bringing it straight down. So I pick this edge. Again, all I'm doing is alt-dragging on the translate manipulator, and I'm going to bring it down to about there. Now I'm going to rotate this because it's not 
going in the direction that I want. So if I come up here and I click the rotate, here's where I'm going to change my pivot point by doing either the T key. Of course, it helps if I pick the right one. I'm going to pick this edge. I'm going to change my pivot point. I'm going to snap it there. And I'm going to make this the rotate tool. Now I can rotate from this edge instead of the middle. I could have rotated from the middle, but then I wouldn't have been able to show you that tool. And I'm going to go back to vert mode. Actually, let me just go ahead and finish dragging out my faces. So I'm going to pick in edge mode again. I hope I'm beating everyone to death with this process because it is basically what I use for everything and I wish it was there was more mystery to it because it would make me seem more talented but it's really really ridiculously simple and I'm going to get a little I'm going to overshoot that a little bit so that I have my return I'm going to bring this one up a little bit all right so let's just quickly go into vert mode and stick this together and this has been a little tedious to watch I'm sure but there's a method to mice because we are actually fairly close to being done with this model despite me make torturing you by making me watch watch you watch me move verts around All right. Everybody getting this? Good. Just make one little adjustment here. So now if I go into perspective mode in a perspective view, you can see, and I shade this, you can see it's just a flat, dead flat piece. And I've pretty accurately match my sketch and so now it's time for the fun stuff let's add a little form to this and it, for now you know I have pretty much in my head I know what I'm looking for so for now I'm gonna hide this image just so it's not distracting and I'm gonna go to object mode pick my object and I'm gonna extrude this a little bit using the extrude tool that I can never find here in the menu where are you I know you're in there. Top top row. Towards the right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Hiding next to the word that says extrude. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to pick all of these faces, and I'm going to extrude these straight out. Now, this is where you can see how box mode kind of shows you what you've got. And what I can do now is in object mode I can pick this and see that I've got one big object here. The, um, the other thing that I've got going on is I can really quickly see what's what here. So if I switch, let me flip this to smooth mode real quick so you can see what we've done. And um, this should all smooth out. Now I'm going to open up a few things here because the head tube is not going to be right. But you can see that we've made this nice, smooth, ordered kind of model here. Now, I want the top and bottom of the head tube open. I want the top of the seat post open. And I want the, the ends of the, of the rear triangle open because I'm assuming that there's going to be a stamped or machine, you know, drop out that's going to fall into here. So let me go to face mode real quick. I'm going to pick the top and the bottom of this, and I'm going to delete it and watch what happens. Once I delete that, this is going to open up, and you'll see that I've created an opening for my head tube. I'm going to pick both of these faces and get rid of them. That will open up the top of my seat mast. Same thing back here for my dropouts. Delete those. So you're just, you're just pressing the delete key there to delete those. Picking faces and pressing the delete key. All right. 
Now the fun begins. So what I can do here is I can start picking edges. And this is where I totally dig T-splines because I have stopped being just another standard model monkey and I am designing in 3D. This to me is what makes T-splines so cool. And let me throw, I'm going to throw an oxpecker shader on here because it's easier to see as I'm working. Um, let's see, we'll try the silver and see how that works. And let's try something else that's a little flat. So <clears throat> let me get rid of this. Taking up a lot of real estate. All right. So now I can start picking edges. And I'm gonna double click it. I'm gonna double click my edge and get all of that. And now I can start moving edges and creating my shapes. Based on how they look, but not based on only what I can model. Because with T-splines I can model anything. So I'm going to pull this in a little bit and you can see how that light knife just appears. And look at that fantastic transition. Look at that highlight. I'm kind of a highlight nerd, so that stuff really gets me excited. I'm going to pull this one out a little bit. Let it wrap around the front. I'm going to push this one in a little bit. See, I'm making my decisions based on how something looks, not based on what I can pull off in some complicated modeling program. I'm going to pick this edge. And I'm going to get a little bit more round shape out of that. And I'm going to move this edge over. So this is, this is where it becomes really, really fun to start modeling stuff again because you're not beating your head against a fillet tool that won't work or uh, some surface that won't go watertight or some fillet that keeps bombing on you or some ridiculous thing like that. It's just, just absolute joy to work with because you can just make really awesome shapes. I'm going to pull this in a little bit because it's a little bit thick. Seat two, seat masks are usually not that thick. See? Look at all these amazing transitions I'm getting for free. Look at that. Oh yeah, baby! Sorry. All right, I'm going to pull this edge back a little bit. Same thing back here. And this is just what I'm using to get my form, you know, because I just make it look a little less extruded. And as I'm doing that, you can see how all these shapes are blending together in a most awesome fashion. I think I got a little, a little zealous with that one. Let's move it back out. So this is the coolest thing about this, is you can play with highlights, especially in an object like this, or a car, where the highlights and the way that the light is falling on a surface is what you're relying on to, to make the emotional connection from your, your consumer to your object. You know, the rear window and fender 
highlight on a Porsche 911 is absolutely positively gorgeous. And that's one of the reasons people look at that car and say, oh my God, that thing is absolutely phenomenal. Well, you know, without having to spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, you know, clay modeling and painting and running up and down it with a fluorescent light, you know, you can sit in here and you can do this and T-splines and get these amazing highlights and these amazing transitions and you can adjust them and evaluate them on the fly. So I can come in here and shut my shut my isoprams off and evaluate. Is this is this highlight going through here how I like it? Is my you know is my seat mass blending correctly? Is the are the is the is the highlight puddling the way the way I want it to puddle? Am I getting these you know these really this the stuff that when people look at it they're just going to be you know standing there looking at this product in the sun going oh man look at that you know and then I can also see if I do stupid things like leave a big kink in the model pull this back out a little bit. It's also really easy to have highlights blend in and out of each other. Like say for instance, I don't want this to go all the way through like that. Or maybe this one's a little bit too sharp. I have the ability to go in here and pick it, hit the delete key and get rid of it. and smooth that out, which in this case is too much, but I'll fix it. All right, so at the risk of geeking out on this way too much and losing everybody, let's move on. So now <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to make the, the opening for the rear wheel. That can't happen right on the, uh, on the line of symmetry. I'm going to thin these up a little bit. So I have to create my Y branch. Well, that's really easy because I'm just going to pick all this stuff and I'm just going to go boop and move that out like that. Now I'm going to go back to the perspective mode. I'm going to apply symmetry to this model so that I have my other side, which, which means I'll get my other side of my Y branch for free. So I'm just going to pick symmetry. I'm going to pick this object. I want it to go across the Y. Right click to accept. And if everything goes right, I should have a nice symmetrical model with the opening in the back. Now, <clears throat> something that happens fairly commonly. You'll do this and get some sort of weird thing going on here. Well, there's a couple of ways to fix that. First of all, don't panic because any creases that are happening back here are happening because there's an open surface back here. And we'll fix that and you'll see that those will go away real quick. So let's start with that. Well, the first thing that I always like to do is right click on the edit layout tool and make the model uniform. So I'm going to right click edit layout. I'm going to pick my object, right click to accept. This will go through and just make everything all nice and orderly and it will improve the topology of my model a little bit. Now you'll see there's something funky going on here. And in smooth mode, this is a little bit difficult to diagnose exactly what's going on. It looks like there's some verts crossing and there's something turned inside out. So this is where box mode is really helpful. So I'm going to smooth toggle this and I'm going to turn my verts on. Now I can see right now that I've got a vert. If I follow this isoparam, it's crossing the line of symmetry and it's way over here. Well, that's stupid. I don't want that. So I'm going to just move this. I'm going to untie these until my box mode makes sense. And when I switch back to smooth mode, it's fixed. And my transition is so awesome. I love that. All right. Sorry. 
So let's fix up the back end here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge the top of this open edge to the bottom of this open edge to close the rear end of the stay up. And then since I'm doing it across the line of symmetry, if I bridge this side, it'll happen over here too. I'm going to do the same thing down here. And then what that's going to do is that's going to leave a little open triangle up here, in which case I'm going to bridge from one side to the other. That'll close up and this transition will happen. This is a really common problem. This is where people tend to freak out with T-splines models. And they say, oh my god, I got to something and look, it's got this huge crease in it. It's really ugly and uh, things broken and you guys are terrible. Well, we're actually not terrible. We actually really like you and make a good product. So the thing that you're doing is you've got an unresolved inside corner here that's throwing a crease through the model. All you have to do is keep going down the road a little bit and, and this will resolve itself. So let's go ahead and do that. And in this case, I'm going to use the bridge tool and it may, may be easier to do this not shaded. So I'm going to bridge, make sure that I'm using edges, and I'm going to go here to here, one segment, That should fill in. Now, you'll notice what happens if I shade this. Not only did that fill in, but it threw another crease through my model. Well, it feels like, for new, for new users, it feels like, oh my god, I just ruined this thing. What is going on? Keep going. <laughs> if, I, if I bridge the bottom here, I'm going to get the same effect. Don't panic. This is what's supposed to happen. Oops, not that one. Bridge that. It's going to close up. Now, since there's going to be another unresolved edge here, it's going to throw another crease for it, which feels like I'm going backwards. It feels like I'm making more of a mess out of this. Well, don't panic. Just keep going. Now, what's going to happen here, since you'll notice that as I did that, I bridged on one side, and since it was a symmetrical model, it did the other side. When I bridge from one side to the other, however, I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose my symmetry. So I did these first so that I got the other side for free. When I bridge across these two, the symmetry on my model is going to disappear. And the reason for that is I'm just I'm sending one edge across. It's you know I'd have to have I'd have to have two separate entities and cross the center line in order for that to happen, but it's not it's not going to be the case. So what I'm going to do Kyle, what happens gonna, if you just bridge the one face on the one side? This one to here? No, just, just one face. See how you know, there's two faces you need to make a bridge for? Just bridge on the one side of symmetry. Yeah, just like that. Oh, from here to here? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I can do that. I was going to I was gonna bridge across here, but yeah, that'll work. Oh, if okay. I do, if I do this, I can bridge that. Oh, it still kills symmetry. Okay, yeah, so that didn't really solve your problem. Okay, cool. Sorry, you go back to you. Go back to your plan. That's Matt screwing up my model. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to undo that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge this one to this one I'm going to lose my symmetry when I do this that's okay give it a second and then, basically, I've got two holes down here. I can just use the fill hole command. And I'm going to switch to box mode just so this moves a little quicker. So I'm going to just use the fill hole tool. Fill that. Fill that. I'm going to do the same thing up here. 
I'm going to bridge from this edge to this edge. I'm going to use the fill hole and fill hole. So now I'm all buttoned up. If I smooth toggle this now, I should get a really beautiful bridge transition right here. Looks like there's an issue there. See how that's bow tying? Looks like I might have selected something from the top view and tied something up. So let's go back to box mode and figure out what that is. See, I make the mistakes so you don't have to. Now, ideally I would have wanted to fix this before I killed the symmetry because then it would have untied equally on both sides. But that's easy enough to fix. I can just go back and delete half the model and reapply symmetry and refill my holes. So let's do that. I'm going to go to the top view. I'm going to go to face mode. I'm going to select half the model here. And I'm going to delete it. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete these and I'll just go do, I'll redo that. Make sure I don't have anything else crazy going on here. See that vert? This is why box mode is so cool. See that sticking way out in space there? It's really easy to see in, in box mode. If your box mode makes sense, your model will make sense. If your box mode's all jacked up, then your model's going to be jacked up. So this is why I keep going back and forth between the two to make sure that everything is making sense and lining up and doing what it needs to do. If you see something that's really way out of joint, then you know that you know, you're kind of in for a problem. So let's go ahead and throw symmetry back on this. And we'll just knit this back up real quick. I'm going to go back and bridge this. And oops, I'll make sure I'm in face mode or in edge mode. Here to here. That's fine. Fill hole. Fill hole. Same thing up here. Bridge from here to here. The hole, the hole. All right. So now if I toggle smooth, I hit the tab key there, which is the hot key for toggle smooth, or I can hit the smooth toggle down here. We've got a beautiful, crazy organic, beautifully transitioning bike frame going on here. Obviously you can come in here and tune this up a million different ways. You can drag these in or out. You can add detail through here. You can split that up, you know, however you want to do it and come in here and really start tuning this thing up. You can get into the verts and start, you know, kind of micro fine tuning your highlights to do what they want to do, but in the interest of time, I think I'm going to call that done. The one thing that I would do, you know, to finish this up is I would obviously widen the head tube a little bit here by picking this edge. Cool trick is to pick a couple of edges and hit the L key, which will give you the edge loop. And I'm going to widen this just a hair so that looks like it makes a little more sense. And I lost symmetry, so I didn't do it on the other side. Ideally, I'd want to go back and fix that with symmetry. So, um, But anyway, so now you can get into the fine-tuning of the model. The whole thing's built, and you can adjust what you want. If you want to do some crazy, you know, Cervelo, uh, S-Stay or something like that, it's really easy to throw that kind of stuff in there. The other cool thing about this, and I, I'd have to talk to some of my friends in the bicycle industry to see whether or not this would even make sense, but I would imagine if you did any 
finite element analysis or, or digital wind tunnel testing or anything like that, this would be really awesome because you can check it and if there's something that needed to get tweaked, it's so easy to fix something like coming here and just raise that a little bit. Maybe that affects the arrow, you know, of how this thing works and, you know, does that give you an advantage or not? I don't know. From a performance side of, side of, side of things, that may be a really cool workflow to be able to go in and do some element analysis on this and run it and then do a few little tweaks and optimize the thing to see, you know, adjust it for strength or stress or aerodynamics or anything. But anyway, that's, um, that's pretty much what I have for you today. I hope everybody enjoyed it. If there's any questions, please hit me with them now. Um, obviously, to finish this up, you you know, go in and, and dial this up, but seeing as this is a beginner webinar, I don't want to, I don't want to beat you over the head with anything other than that alt drag and weld workflow and show how easy it is to create something fairly complicated.